Number 10. Surveillance in Turkey Illegal excavations can be found wherever there are artifacts to be uncovered. And in Turkey, authorities have employed surveillance technology to identify and thwart potential looters. Despite challenges, though, a recent operation led to the discovery of some extremely rare sarcophagi. Researchers were warned of potential robbers near the ancient city of Aphrodisias, so they started surveilling the area using drones and motion-sensitive cameras. After several weeks of surveillance, authorities detected a group of men who were clearly up to no good. Local cops searched the area and found recently dug pits in an olive grove. And amazingly, one of the pits contained a half-unearthed sarcophagus. The looters had managed to uncover a hidden burial pit that archaeologists didn't even know about. They dug all the way down to the sarcophagus but clearly hadn't been able to get them out of the ground. The site was then placed under the proper protection, and archaeologists came in to finish what the looters had started. During their work, they discovered another sarcophagus and a secret buried altar. One of the sarcophagi is decorated with a Medusa relief, and they all date to about 2,300 years ago, when Turkey was dominated by Greek influence. However, little more is known at this point. It was an extremely rushed mission because of the looters. So, more research is needed to learn who was buried in the stone coffins and what god was worshipped at the altar. Side note, these things are very heavy, so doesn't that make you wonder who is going to buy an enormous stone ancient sarcophagus? What were the looters going to do with it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And now for number 9, but first I want to give a big shout out to Might7077 and 666 so I'm better off dead. Thank you so much for watching and supporting Origins Explain. We love being part of your day and hello to your town. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number 9. Stolen Treasures in Italy Thousands of artifacts that were stolen from graves and pillaged from archaeological digs were recently recovered in Italy. Italian police arrested 21 suspects as part of an operation to crack down on the illegal sale and distribution of historical objects. It was a massive mission that required the manpower of several hundred officers. The people who were arrested were under investigation for what the authorities described as clandestine excavations. And according to the chief prosecutor's press release, they were busted for receiving stolen goods and participating in the illicit market, both at home and abroad. Authorities recovered a total of 3,586 pieces of historical and commercial value. They also confiscated 60 metal detectors, shovels, metal spikes, and other objects needed for excavations. There was a total of 1,679 coins that were recovered, all of which were minted between the 4th century BC and 3rd century AD. But that's not all. They also recovered jugs, vases, oil lamps, and even weights that were once used in a loom from the illegal excavators. In Italy, these people are known as tombaroli, or grave robbers. They go to ancient sites and dig around for whatever they can find. Then, the grave robbers traffic the artifacts across Italy and internationally to collectors who will pay big money. This project was aimed at curbing the predatory actions being taken against archaeological heritage. Experts say the grave robbers got especially bold during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thieves needed new opportunities to make money, and the lockdown made it easy to pillage archaeological sites. How severe of a crime do you think grave robbing is? What do you think is an appropriate punishment? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. The Blood of Christ Thieves in France recently returned a shrine said to contain the blood of Jesus Christ himself. It's called the Precious Blood of Christ Relic, and it's one of the most sacred holy objects that you've never heard of. It was stolen from Normandy's Fecamp Abbey in June 2023 by clever thieves. They locked themselves in the church overnight once everyone was gone. Then they pillaged the relic and other works of art. They even stole everything they could that was made out of gold. But the thieves had a tough time holding a shrine with Christ's blood in it, so they contacted Dutch detective Arthur Brand, a man commonly referred to as the Dutch Indiana Jones. He's infamous for tracking down stolen artwork and historical objects. The thieves contacted him anonymously and then left the relic on his doorstep. Arthur said his doorbell rang at about 10.30 p.m., 
and that when he looked outside, he saw a box in front of his door. And sure enough, it was the blood of Jesus, one of the oldest relics of the Catholic Church. Arthur said the thieves likely didn't know what it was when they took it, but once they realized they were holding on to the blood of Jesus, which they'd stolen, they wanted to get rid of it fast. Arthur said the precious blood of Christ relic is about as close to the Holy Grail as you can get. The artifact is 2,000 years old, and it's dated to almost the exact same time that Christ was crucified. Do you think the precious blood of Christ relic really contains the blood of Jesus Christ? Or do you think it's nothing but a fake? Let me know what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 7. Louisiana Looters The first people to live in North America made their way to the swamps and woodlands of Louisiana 12,000 years ago. They established homes, built settlements, and explored the land. They also left very little evidence of themselves behind. But when they did, it was mostly things like stone tools and spear points. These ancient relics have been hidden underneath the forest floor for thousands of years. But due to hurricanes and flooding over the past two decades, many of the artifacts have been revealed. During the summer of 2023, archaeologists worked hard to extract the relics before they could be stolen by looters. The U.S. Forest Service recently made a statement saying that the area was continuously occupied throughout prehistory. It was first identified as a place of importance in 2003. Then, after Hurricane Laura and Hurricane Delta started throwing trees around, many of the artifacts were exposed, causing looters to descend on the site. Forest Service archaeologist Matthew Helmer said that the looting got so bad that they were in danger of losing the entire site. Once people realized there were artifacts to be found, they made their way into the woods and started doing their own unauthorized digs. Authorities haven't had much luck recovering anything that was stolen, but with the recent effort to extract as many artifacts as possible, researchers should be able to protect the site from future thieves. Number 6. Games and Corpses in China Archaeologists in China discovered a tomb near Qingzhou City, and within the tomb, researchers came across pieces from a board game that hasn't been played by anyone for 1,500 years. They found a 14-sided die made from an animal tooth as well as 21 game pieces and a broken tile that had likely been part of the game board. This was an ancient Chinese version of some game that researchers can't identify. They have all the pieces, but nobody knows how the game was played. Was it like Monopoly? Backgammon? Dungeons & Dragons? There was more inside the tomb than just pieces to a board game. The burial complex had been extensively looted by the time researchers showed up, meaning many of the treasures were already gone. An archaeologist counted 26 shafts that had been dug into the enormous burial chamber by looters in the ancient past. Surprisingly, one of the shafts was found to contain a human skeleton. Archaeologists think the body likely belonged to one of the looters, who got trapped when their shaft collapsed. And if that's true, they basically buried themselves alive. Number 5. The Thracian Princess's Tomb Thousands of archaeological sites in Bulgaria have been plundered by nefarious treasure hunters. And in June 2015, local archaeologists learned that looters were working on a series of tunnels to pillage the tomb of an ancient Thracian princess and her family. The tomb underwent an emergency excavation to save everything of historic value before the thieves could finish their tunnel. Archaeologists got the artifacts out of there while recording as much data as possible. It was an extremely brave endeavor for the thieves. They had had to tunnel through a mound of earth almost 200 feet in diameter. The Thracian princess was buried on the first level, but there were three levels of tombs beneath that. Researchers think the man in the deepest tomb was likely the patriarch of a noble Thracian family. They may have been part of the Odrysian tribe. However, researchers haven't managed to learn much more about them yet. As for the robbers, they were foiled this time, but there will always be another tomb to pillage. Archaeologists in Bulgaria believe that the illegal trafficking of antiquities is the second most lucrative crime in the country. The only crime that makes more money than grave robbing is narcotics trafficking. And yes, both are run by the Bulgarian Mafia. Number 4. The Tunnel Diggers of Egypt Archaeologists used satellite images to track archaeological landscapes in Egypt between 2002 and 2013. This was a very rocky time for Egypt, 
with the nation experiencing great political turmoil and economic strife. And as the country became more unstable, the looters became more eager to dig. Sarah Parkat, space archaeologist at the University of Alabama, was looking through satellite images of the damage done by the looters. Sarah is famous for uncovering lost cities and forgotten pyramids using satellite technology, so she was the perfect one to document the extensive destruction of the Tomb Raiders. Sarah was shocked to find holes dug across the Egyptian desert in the thousands. She and her colleagues identified 15,889 pits dug by looters as of 2009. These are people who go out into the desert with shovels and start digging holes in hopes of coming across an unknown burial ground. And this was a big spike considering the fact that in 2008, just one year prior, there were only 3,247 pits. Sarah estimated that if looting continues, over 1,100 sites will be pillaged by the year 2040. Unfortunately, this story doesn't have a happy ending. After a tomb is looted, the artifacts end up being sold on the black market to anyone with money. In 2002, Egyptian antiquities sold through Sotheby's auction house were purchased for about $3 million. But after the looting spike in 2009, the total value of these items increased to around $13 million. There's a fairly obvious connection here, and it shows just how lucrative grave robbing in Egypt can be. Do you think people should be allowed to look for treasure in the Egyptian desert? Or do you think it should be banned in order to keep history safe? Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 3. The Iraq Museum Looting In April 2003, looters broke into the magnificent National Museum of Iraq. This was two days after museum staff vacated the premises because U.S. forces were coming to Baghdad. Over the next 36 hours, priceless relics from Mesopotamia were stolen. And these were artifacts from the cradle of civilization, ancient pieces of clay scrawled with the first words invented by humans on them. Luckily, the staff at the museum had been smart enough to stash some of the most important pieces. And in total, they were able to safely store 8,366 artifacts. But still, 15,000 pieces of Mesopotamian history were taken from the museum during the pillaging. The good news is that 7,000 items have already been recovered. The bad news is that there are still 8,000 unaccounted for artifacts somewhere out there in the world. Relics like a black stone weight made in the likeness of a duck around the year 2070 BC is still missing and so too is a fluted golden lapis bowl that was uncovered from a cemetery in the city of Ur. But those are only two out of 8,000. What's really interesting is that certain pieces at the museum were so recognizable they couldn't possibly be sold on the open market. Pieces that would be easily recognizable in a museum or on public display. This means they must have been purchased by people who would gladly hoard the artifacts in their private collections. And although the National Museum of Iraq reopened in 2014, it's still missing nearly half of its collection. Some of the artifacts never even made it out of the country. Authorities discovered the Lady of Warka on a farm, just sitting there collecting dust. The Lady of Warka, aka the Mona Lisa of Mesopotamia, is a piece of beautiful artwork from 3100 BC. Authorities also discovered a hoard of treasure in New York, including a statue of the Assyrian king Sargon II and a headless statue of King Antamina of Lagash. Number 2. Grave Robbers in Israel Israeli investigators recently recovered thousands of stolen archaeological objects. Bronze statues, lids from Egyptian sarcophagi, gold coins, pieces of jewelry, and clay vessels were all discovered by researchers. According to the Israel Antiquities Authority, the relics were found thanks to a partnership with Israeli police and the tax authority. The artifacts span a period of history between 1000 BC and 1100 AD. Even though researchers expected to find a lot more stuff, they were still blown away by the astounding quantity of the artifacts. In fact, the head of the IAA's theft prevention unit called it a gargantuan find. Only three suspects were arrested in connection to the stolen objects, they were antiquity dealers, not the thieves who stole the artifacts. The looters themselves likely stole the relics from graves across the Mediterranean and in South America. Researchers were surprised to find treasures from Africa, the Mediterranean, and Andean societies. And at some point, the collection made its way to Israel, 
because it's one of the few places in the world where merchants can easily obtain a license to sell ancient goods. This allows shifty dealers to do business without causing too much suspicion. The most impressive artifacts are pieces of ancient pottery, especially figure vases made in Greece and Italy during the 5th century BC. These spectacular vases depict what everyday life was like in the ancient world. However, many of them may have been ruined. Experts think that the antiquities dealers restored the artifacts to make them look more exciting, hoping to earn themselves extra cash. Because in most cases, vases found in tombs and graves are smashed or fragmented. Number 1. Kim Kardashian – Accidental Archaeologist Kim Kardashian solved an archaeological mystery, although it was entirely by accident. When the star wore a gold dress at the 2018 Met Gala, she posed next to the coffin of a long-dead Egyptian named Nejimank. And afterward, the photo went viral, leading to the conclusion of a criminal case. As it turned out, the coffin was stolen and sold to the Metropolitan Museum of Art for $4 million. Nejimank was a priest of Herishoth, the ram god of ancient Egypt. He was buried around 2,100 years ago and his sarcophagus is covered in inscriptions and funerary spells from the Book of the Dead. Inside the coffin is a figure of Nut, the sky goddess. 2,000 years after Nedjimank was buried, his sarcophagus was illegally excavated in the al Minya region of Egypt. An anonymous tipster saw the picture of Kim Kardashian standing next to the sarcophagus and recognized it. But why? It was because he was the one who dug it out of the ground almost a decade earlier. He was angry that the gang of pillagers never paid him the money he was owed. So when he saw where the coffin had ended up, he ratted them out. An international investigation revealed that the anonymous tipster was telling the truth. In 2013, the coffin was sent to an antiquities dealer in the United Arab Emirates. Papers were then forged and the artifact was mislabeled. Then it was sold to the manager of the Dionysus Gallery in Hamburg, Germany. An export license was faked following a restoration process. All the papers said the coffin was legally exported in 1971. The coffin then went to a French antiquities dealer, and they were the ones who finally sold it to the Met for $4 million. But after the big reveal, thanks to Kim Kardashian's picture, the gold-encrusted coffin was taken back to Egypt. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more! See you next time! Bye!